So I'm sitting here with Moti Label, the human rights activist and journalist in Israel, who uh, faced prison last week for speaking out, uh, probably arrested in the shortest time I've ever seen, which was 30 seconds. So Moti, you were um, falsely arrested by the police, I understand. Yeah, absolutely falsely arrested. And uh, how did they manage to keep you in prison for over 24 hours? Well, actually, they, uh, they lied to the judge. They lied to the judge, they lied to themselves. Uh, what happened is that uh, these particular social workers that I uh, was uh, demonstrating against, uh, she, they thought I have a restraining order from her, and which I didn't. It was removed a week before. And uh, just based on her word, they locked me up. What do you think the bigger agenda is to have you locked up? The bigger agenda? Yeah. To gag me, of course. They don't want uh, people to know, they don't want uh, my protest uh, to grow up uh, because uh, more and more people every day are listening to me and listening uh, to this situation of uh, child trafficking that I'm uh, telling everybody about and they just want to gag me. How hard is it then, Motti, to have freedom of speech here when you want to say something against the system? Well, you don't have freedom of speech. They're uh, establishing rules, uh, you know, very often uh, that we will not be able to talk against people, against the government, against, uh, uh, you know, social workers, from, in my case. So I understand, Motti, that you were held in a small cell um, with 10 people sharing and you've never been in prison before. Can you give uh, people an insight into what life is like in the prison? Uh, sure, it was a pretty small room uh, with uh, five two-story beds for ten people made of, of uh, concrete, very, very dirty, uh, no linen, just mattress with a blanket, uh, you know, uh, dirty blankets. Uh, the people inside are pretty nice actually because, uh, you know, we're on this same boat. Uh, <coughs> But a uh, person that is not ready for it, like a father that uh, his only crime is uh, not be able to pay uh, child support, uh, is 100% uh, will be traumatized uh, from what's going on in there. And we have seen and heard stories of people being there for six to eight months for false charges. How do you think it would affect an ordinary person? problem it, it's really it is a big problem because uh, one day you're a free person well kind of free you're not really free here in Israel uh, but uh, on the other hand the next day you are locked up for four months in this kind of cells sometimes even worse they put you with the criminals uh, even uh, that you are uh, in a civil case here and uh, it can it can actually uh, fuck people up you know? It can break a person. It can break a person very easily. Okay, we'll accept the swear word just there. Um, so, Motti, um, outside, people aren't really aware of life in Israel. Um, you know, they see so much about um, policies and everything. But what is it like for people to actually live inside Israel? How hard is it really? Well, uh, we have uh, 8 million population here in Israel. Uh, Probably five million of them are uh, living a, a good, kind of good life and higher. But there are three million people that are very poor. They, all they do all day is just chase uh, the next dollars uh, to buy food, to be able to pay taxes, to be able to pay for uh, rent, you know. And uh, life here is very difficult. Um, the economy is getting destroyed each and every day. Uh, they're selling, actually they're selling our country, they're selling it to the rich people and we are suffering from it. And then when they don't have anything to, uh, else to take from us, they take our kids and they sell them. So, one could ask why don't people just leave the country if it's so difficult? Well, uh, in Israel, if you even owe a uh, hundred shekels, which is fifty dollars, uh, less than fifty dollars, uh, you uh, as easily as that get uh, no exit order and you cannot leave Israel. We are actually trapped here. So Israelis are trapped in Israel as well as foreign nationals. Absolutely. And uh, talking of trapped, 
how many children are trapped in institutions that shouldn't be there? Well, uh, the welfare uh, numbers are uh, 85,000 kids uh, are uh, in institutions at every given uh, moment. But uh, my, well, I think uh, that is way more than that. I think about 120,000 kids are in uh, institutions, foster families, adoptions. And did they want to be there? I mean, because I'm hearing and seeing from you that a lot of these uh, children are taken from loving parents. Yeah, only because the poor ones. I said, uh, when the government has nothing to take from us anymore, they take our kids. One of the reasons I understand your campaigning is that they don't always take all the children from a family. Sometimes they just take one or two and leave the others behind. Yeah, absolutely. Most of the cases that I know, uh, you know, there's a mom with uh, three, four kids and you just come and take one because they need one at the moment. Just to put the, there is a free space in the in institution, they need to fill it up so they come and just take one. You can be a good mom or dad to three, four kids. But for the fifth, no. It's remarkable for us outside to actually understand that. Uh, and I understand why you're speaking out. Um, how, uh, I know you've been arrested by the police, but how many times have you had harassment charges or court cases for your freedom of speech right? Well, I have quite a few uh, court cases. Uh, they're suing me. Uh, they find all these stupid uh, reasons. Uh, they're not actually reasons. And we go to court and sometimes uh, they drop the charges, sometimes uh, uh, they just say uh, give me a restraining order against uh, social workers. But uh, you know, they give me 10 restraining orders, I have thousands more of social workers, so I'm, obviously I'm not going to stop. I think we'd find it in Europe quite remarkable, uh, the amount of freedom of speech that we have versus you. Do you find it odd that we can open our mouths and say pretty much what we like abroad? Yeah, absolutely. I know you told me about what's going on uh, in, in uh, Britain, for example, that people can stand and shout and scream whatever they want and protest and nothing harm will, ha will happen to them. But uh, Israel is not as democratic as everybody thinks. Uh, Actually, we're a police state. We, we all call it a police state because you cannot speak, shout, scream. You cannot say anything against the government or the police or the social workers, the welfare, uh, without getting uh, or even trying to arrest you and gag you. So what would you ask all the people watching from outside the world who have differing views about your government? Uh, what would you ask the people outside about you, the people? so that they can learn something that they didn't know. Uh, yeah, I know, uh, I know that most of the times people talk about uh, Palestinians, for example, and uh, Israelis. But it's not. It's Palestinians and Israel government. It's Palestinian government against Israeli government because I know that many of the Palestinians want exactly the, the life that I want. They just want to live in peace, be able to work, uh, with put food on the table, raise the kids, exactly like we do. Uh, so uh, what I'm trying to do is let uh, the whole world know that uh, the Israeli government does not represent the people because the people here are suffering uh, from the government. How far are you prepared to go in your own life for the freedom of speech that you're representing? Well, actually, I'm at a point that I cannot go back to normal life. Uh, I'm at the point that I'm kind of leading a um, uh, struggle against, basically, mostly against the welfare state. And uh, I just can't go back, so I'm all in. So I have to do what I have to do, you know. I'll do all it takes. Well, we're going to try and support your freedom of speech. And thank you.